Hi there, I'm Danny, and two weeks ago I published my video about reaching purse piece and that was a collaboration video with my friend here on YouTube, Ron from Ramirify. In that video I talked about how I have arrived at purse piece because I have all four of my holy grail handbags. So I'm filming this video immediately after I filmed that video. And in that video you saw the same backdrop, I have my Hermes Kelly over here, I have my Lady Dior as well as my Birkin 25. And last week I published my Chanel Classic Flap unboxing video. So here she is, I've added her to the backdrop. These are my Holy Grail handbags, I have them all now and obviously it is highly relevant to the topic of today's video. The funny thing about arriving at Purse Piece is I feel that I'm a little bit over luxury. I do have a memory that I got to this mindset after I bought my Chanel Classic Flap. And since I bought my Chanel Classic Flap, I have bought more bags that I actually haven't received yet, but I'm very proud to say that they are not exorbitantly expensive luxury handbags. Some of them are, you know, from Etsy, and the others are contemporary brands that I either purchased with a heavy discount or I purchased a second hand. There are a number of factors that have led me to this mindset or epiphany, realization, whatever you want to call it. Well, the first one would be filming my handbag collection video. And for the longest time, I put that video off. Although, you know, it, it's always a video that's very popular and people are very excited to watch it. You get lots of views. And my handbag collection video has admittedly helped my channel grow quite a bit in the last couple of months. Warmest welcome to those of you who are new to my channel. But for a long time, I was putting off filming that video because I was in somewhat denial. I was worried about seeing how many handbags I had and essentially, you know, facing the music. <laughs> and in that video, there were 31 handbags. Those handbags excluded guests and I have bags from Amazon as well as some luxury dupes that I purchased off eBay and I also have a bag from Gap. So I guess that was the first thing, the realization of how many handbags that I actually own. <laughs> so that's a good wake up call for me. And the other thing was I have also filmed a most neglected bag video and that video was meant to go up for Vlogmas but I could not edit it in time. I will edit it and put it out on my channel soon but filming that video as well it made me come to the realization that I can't use all my handbags. I should just try and enjoy what I have. There's no need to just keep spending all this money. The other thing I'm really pleased to say is that my sticker shock is back. You know, when I was browsing for these really expensive handbags, so my Birkin 25 and then my classic flap over here, I was used to seeing price tags like $20,000, $19,000, $24,000, $29,000, and suddenly if I saw a bag that was $9,000, I was like, oh wow, that's cheap. <laughs> Come on, reality woman. <laughs> so um, I guess, you know, I, I'm really glad that my sticker shock is back every time I see a price tag. Sometimes even if I see uh, a contemporary brand and it's $1,000 or $500, I'm like, wow, that's, that's really expensive for a bag. So now I can't really see myself parting ways uh, with my money for a luxury handbag, at least for a little while. And I hope I continue feeling the same for at least this year. I guess the other reason why I'm slightly over luxury handbags is that I do have quite big financial goals. Um, I don't want to say unrealistic. I'll use the word ambitious because I think that's a bit more positive, right? And obviously when I buy luxury handbags, I'm only making somebody else rich, not myself. <laughs> Now I guess when I look at my handbag collection video, you know, you do a rough calculation of how much you spent on your handbags. Oh well, that's what I do anyway. I have a Carrie Bradshaw moment. Remember when Miranda calculated the rough cost of her shoes and that could have been a down payment for her apartment? Yeah, you know, obviously any one of you can look at my handbag collection video and estimate what I could have bought with that money instead. Last year, I also did a lot of unboxings. I know that I did a lot of shopping last year. You know I like to do true unboxings as well, so I got to a point where I was actually tired of waiting for the postman. I got tired of um, having to sit down and film the unboxing. I got tired of putting the bags away and finding storage for it. So yeah, I'm, I am a little bit of tired of shopping. <laughs> In fact, I bought so much stuff last year that I haven't even been able to finish unboxing them. Some of them are going to spill into the new year. For example, the Chanel Classic Flap I did purchase last year, but I unboxed it only in January this year. And some of the other things that I have purchased last year that has, I guess, assisted or facilitated my arrival at this mindset. I'll tell you what they are and you can look forward to seeing those unboxing videos and that way you know what was purchased prior to myself arriving at this mindset. And there is a Louis Vuitton key pouch, there is a Chanel card case, and I also added a Coach Hadley 21 to my collection. That one I didn't pay for, that was a birthday present, but that unboxing is coming up. And I also received a Louis Vuitton scarf as a birthday present as well. So if you like unboxing videos, those unboxings will still be coming up. Now, if you're asking whether I regret these purchases, I will say no. Um, I learned something from 
all of these purchases and to be honest a lot of these purchases I purchased out of FOMO. <laughs> the luxury price increases really got to me. I would prefer to pay the lowest price possible for an item and if the price goes up after that that is a huge bonus for me. And I talked about how I would cope with luxury price increases in this video because of all the crazy price increases. Like you can have different journeys when it comes to buying luxury handbags and I decided to go straight for the handbags that I wanted. Sure, I bought a few other handbags along the way but for example, there are lots of videos that say, you know, this is the Louis Vuitton starter bag, this is the starter Chanel bag, this is the starter Hermes bags. I didn't go for any of the starter bags. I just targeted the specific bags that I wanted and I purchased them, I guess, as early as I could um, at the best price that I could. And I will say that buying these bags have set me free. My FOMO is really not that bad anymore. And I'm really, really pleased about that. It's a real blessing. Now the other big one is the rise of super fakes. Now there are so many comparison videos comparing an authentic bag versus super fakes and oh my gosh the similarity is so close and you know I like to shop pre-loved so the chances of getting a super fake pre-loved bag I just feel like that's too high and I'm really worried about that and do I sometimes question the authenticity of my bags? I actually do. Now you can actually buy super fakes at the boutique as well because sometimes people will purchase an authentic one and they'll go ahead and return um, a super fake and because the SAs are not trained to authenticate handbags they might take the bag back and that bag is then sold to other people or even if we're not talking about boutique there are uh, department stores that carry luxury handbags and there was a time when there was a lady who was purchasing all these luxury handbags from a department store and then she would just bring some super fakes back and just return it to the store of course, I have to just make a token mention of the reducing quality of some of these luxury handbags uh, year after year and you know people are gradually finding that these luxury handbags are not high quality anymore. And that's all I'm going to say about quality issues at luxury stores because I think it's talked about a lot. The other thing that I am super grateful to have discovered is this channel Tanner Leverstein. I'm pretty sure a lot of you know about this channel already. He's absolutely killing it on YouTube. I'm so grateful for the education that he's providing. I'm learning so much from him. And, and what Tanner does is he pulls apart handbags, he tells you the cost price of the bag and how much you would actually pay for craftsmanship. And it's not that I wasn't aware of this before, but it's made me acutely aware of the huge markup of these bags. I'm going to do a whole reaction video to Tanner's channel because you know I really enjoy watching it and I, um, I do interact with him sometimes in the comments and he's amazing in a sense that he responds really passionately. So stay tuned for that. And to me there is a time and place for these luxury items. There are times in my life when luxury items in fact uh, are not appropriate. So I guess all that combined, you know, the really high price tag, the poor quality issues, the potential poor after sale service that I could get, and the fact that I'm just paying for logo. I don't mind paying for a bag that has quality and good after sale service, but if all of that is taken away, I'm just paying for logo, why do I want to pay for brands that don't deliver what they should? I have since bought some non-luxury handbags and I find that they do give me a level of joy as well and I feel like why pay so much money for these really expensive luxury handbags. And out of this journey, I have realized that the amount of money that you pay for a handbag is really not equivalent to the amount of joy that you get. It's not that I didn't know that, I kind of needed these bags to be my possession because they were my holy grail bags in order to to get over that point um, and now that I have these every time I look at another luxury handbag I can say to myself you have your holy grail bags that's not your holy grail bag what makes you think purchasing that bag is going to make you any happier so you know I guess from the point of view of wanting to achieve my financial goals it'll be better if I go ahead and purchase a bag from a craftsman and enjoy that I did put a poll up on my community post asking whether you guys would be interested in seeing my purchases from Etsy and you know a lot of these will be luxury dupes and a majority said yes go ahead and show us we will be interested to see and I'm happy to say that I have really really enjoyed and have been really impressed with some of these items and I'd be more than willing to share them with you. For a number of years I have really liked the idea of being able to retire early like if I could retire at the age of 52 I would really love that. And it's not that I would not go to work after the age of 52, but I would really like it to be optional. Yeah, I want work to be optional. And if I needed to drop work because my family needed me, that's something I want to be able to do. And despite not working, still being able to sustain some sort of lifestyle. And for those of you who are here for luxury content, please don't be worried. 
um, I can still film a lot of luxury content. And if you feel like looking at my entire handbag collection from 2020 show, you can go ahead and click on this link over here.